first time, Olympic long-distance runner Kara Goucher publicly discusses her sexual assault allegations against her famous former coach. Her new memoir, The Longest Race, details what she says were enormous struggles on and off the track. Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis. For Kara Goucher, running is her inspiration, her source of happiness, even a religion of sorts. Just curious when you fell in love with running. I fell in love with it the first time I did it. My grandpa, when I was six years old, took me to my first race. With running, I could just be free, and I just loved it. By junior high, she began to blossom on her cross-country team. And although she made strides in college, she questioned her potential to become an elite athlete. You start thinking you're ready to hang up the running shoes, and then you get a phone call. I had signed a Nike contract, but I just was really struggling. I was having a hard time staying healthy. My husband at the time was a bigger, much bigger star than I was, but he had also been struggling. And we got a call from Nike that we should come check out the Oregon Project. Nike's Oregon Project provided all the high-tech bells and whistles a professional athlete could dream of. That's where, in 2004, she met Alberto Salazar, the legendary runner and trainer who early in his career won the New York City Marathon three years in a row. Tell us about the name Alberto Salazar in that world of, of running and, and how revered he was. Alberto Salazar was very, very powerful. He was very charismatic. He talked to you straight to your face. He really roped you in, but he was a legend, and he still is a legend of the sport. Kara became the first woman on Nike's renowned Oregon Project running team, and under the close supervision of Salazar, she excelled as a world-class distance runner, even making it to the Olympic finals twice. Despite her success, she says his coaching style was at times unconventional and included body-shaming tactics and instances of what she considered sexually inappropriate comments. She says Salazar would also sometimes give personal massages to his athletes, which she thought was unusual, but rationalized as a sign of his dedication. Goucher alleges that during one post-workout massage Salazar gave her while on the road, he sexually abused her. So tell us about the moment that you felt like this, this isn't normal, that you felt uncomfortable. Yeah, the first time I was in a hotel alone with Alberto in Rieti, Italy, and he was giving me a you know, a post-workout pre-race, what he would call a flush. I was thinking, there's no way he's touching me like that. I'm imagining this. But really, I was just sort of frozen, um, not knowing what to say or do or accept that this was happening. Goucher says Salazar abused her again during another massage just a few years later during a trip to Lisbon. And I just remember thinking, I can never travel alone with him again. I can't put myself in this situation. At the time, Goucher says she never discussed the alleged sexual abuse, not even with her husband. She says it was years later, after leaving the Oregon Project and while testifying as part of a U.S. anti-doping agency investigation connected to Salazar, that she first mentioned the alleged assaults. In 2019, that agency suspended Salazar for four years for doping violations, which he has denied. Then in 2021, the United States Center for Safe Sport, an organization that investigates abuse claims in Olympic sports, banned Salazar from coaching for life for sexual misconduct. Safe Sport did not identify the accuser, but Goucher now says her testimony for Safe Sport about Salazar's alleged abuse was the basis for that lifetime ban. Salazar told ABC News, any claim that Ms. Goucher was sexually assaulted by me is categorically untrue. I've never sexually assaulted Ms. Goucher and never would have done so. The accusation is deeply hurtful and abhorrent and contrary to my fundamental belief as a husband, father, and deeply devout Catholic. In a statement, Nike said in part, sexual misconduct has no place in sports or society and is something we stand vehemently against. Alberto is no longer a contracted coach and we shuttered the Oregon Project several years ago. Mr. Salazar did not engage in any doping of his athletes and not a single Oregon Project athlete was found to have violated the rules. Goucher says Salazar wasn't her only difficult experience while working for Nike. At a certain point, you're pregnant, you're still making a lot of appearances, but they stop payments on their checks to you. Why was that? You know, they had just announced my pregnancy on the front page of the sports section of the New York Times, and then I found out that I hadn't been suspended without pay because of my medical condition. Pregnancy is not written in the athlete contracts. That's something we've fought for over the last few years. Goucher says she returned to training just two weeks after her son Colton was born 
and ran the Boston Marathon six months after giving birth. Sarah Goucher, who had the heartbreaker here in 2009. Nike responded in part by saying they've standardized their approach to support their female athletes during pregnancy, adding that their new policy waives performance reductions for a total of 18 months. <laughs> what, does it attack you? What does the title mean, the longest race? As athletes, we think about, if I make it to the Olympics and then it's done, and I think I used to have that mindset. And this was the longest part, to really come to be able to tell my truth and be able to use my own voice. But it's not over yet. For GMA3, Lindsay Davis, ABC News, New York. And again, our many thanks to Lindsay Davis for the report. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.